Principles to Success, 11 to 13. Welcome to Rethink Your Perspectives blog. This blog dedicated to finding, sharing and discussing a variety of topics around the struggles our clients and audience go through. Each episode we will discuss a key concept that many humans struggle with and give you a variety of perspectives for you to see the concept through so you can find one that makes it feel easier to deal with. We hope you get some benefit from these blog posts and we'd love to hear your thoughts. Don't hesitate to like, share and comment at the links. In the best-selling book, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill explores recurring themes and principles that he noticed across all the hundreds of people he interviewed. Today, I'm going to finish exploring the 13 principles of success in more detail with the last three, the subconscious mind, the brain, and the sixth sense. Once understood, you'll be able to use these principles to guide you to your own success, push through your limiting beliefs, and start living the life that you want to live. So let's go take a look. To see the playlist for all of these principles in one minute reels, please visit the YouTube channel. The playlist is linked um, in the description and also as a video card. Principle of success number 11, the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind holds our programming or paradigm. Paradigms are a multitude of unconscious habits that control our habitual behavior. And 95% of our behavior is habitual. We do things automatically. No thought required. Our beliefs create our paradigms. Most of our beliefs pass down from our families or develop from the environment we spend most of our time in. As discussed in a previous post, most of our beliefs are wrong, but we can change them, as is discussed in that post. The the subconscious is completely subjective. It has no ability to choose or make judgment. It must simply accept everything that the conscious mind gives it. That creates your feelings, as the subconscious is the emotional mind. Those feelings create the vibration our body's in. This works for and against us because we can, choose our imag- we can choose to use our imagination to see anything we want. This can boost our emotions, but we can also choose to think negatively, which creates negative emotions. Conscious mind. Our conscious mind is where our senses connect, like little antenna. We can see, hear, smell, touch, taste, and these inputs are wired into our conscious mind. Our higher faculties are also resident in our conscious mind, but very few of us are aware of these, let alone know how to use them. These are the will, our focus, perception, the way we see the world, reason, how we interact with ideas, memory, we all have a perfect memory, imagination, anything you can imagine in your mind you can create in your physical world, and intuition, how you pick up on other people's energy and that little voice in the back of your mind. We can develop each of these faculties to an infinite degree, but these are not the focus of this post. Please get in touch if you want to know more. Our conscious mind has the ability to think and choose what it thinks. It can think in past and future tense through memory and imagination. Nobody can make you think anything that you don't want to think. Only you can choose what you think about at any given thing. The body. As mentioned above, the body is merely the instrument of the mind. It's the physical manifestation of whatever our subconscious is feeling. Our thoughts dictate how we're feeling. The manifestation of our feelings into actions causes a reaction from the universe. Universal spirit doesn't care if your actions are positive or negative. It will return like energy to you. What you give out, you will get back. The action reaction is dictated by the law of cause and effect and works equally in all of us. This is what creates our circumstances, conditions and environment and ultimately causes our results. It's not the other way round, as we've been led to believe. An image to make sense of this? Dr Thurman Fleet developed the stick person image in 1934. It is quite simply a large circle at the top with a smaller circle underneath. The small circle has arms and legs and there's a neck that joins the two. The large circle on the top is then split into half and it represents the subconscious and the conscious mind and the small body at the bottom with the arms and legs represents the body. He realised that the healing arts were only ever treating the symptoms rather than the cause of dis-ease in the body. Dr. Keith Fleet coined the idea that when the body is in dis-ease, it's caused by the mind. Let me explain, as that is pretty abstract. Um, Dr. Fleet and several authors before and since his time write that the body is merely an instrument of the mind. Mind is not a thing, it's an activity. It's the control centre, and the brain is the electrical switching station that controls the body. Effectively, the mind controls the actions of the body. However, no one had ever seen the mind, 
We did not have a picture of it, and as visual beings that think in images, we struggled. We can't heal something we cannot see. Dr. Fleet drew the stick person graphic as a way of giving people a visual to work with. He explained that the top circle is the mind, split in half with the conscious mind above and the subconscious below. The lower circle represents the body. What the stick person helps to explain. Our behaviours and habits control our results. They in turn are controlled by our mind. A great power flows in and through us into the conscious mind. We can use that power to build images of the life we want to lead and the person we want to become. As we get emotionally involved with these images, they are impressed on and accepted by the subconscious mind. Our body expresses these emotions through our actions. The universe then reacts to those actions and causes our circumstances, conditions and results to change. We must understand that our current feelings, circumstances, conditions and results are all caused by our subconscious behaviours. Like attracts like. We can only attract that which is in harmony with our vibration, and that is influenced by what we think about. If we think about debt, even getting out of debt, we will receive much more debt. But if we think about earning and receiving money, then we will receive prosperity. We need to always be aware of our thinking and only focus on that which we want. Focus right now with one eye on the future. Our current and past results are simply a snapshot of our feelings and, and thoughts at that point in time. They have no bearing on our future potential unless we let them. Unfortunately, we focus on our current and past results. That's how we're programmed. So we find it difficult to focus on what we want. We need to switch our thinking to working from the inside out, from the image of what we want rather than what is around us now. We all have deep reservoirs of potential within us. To release it, we must simply follow this process. Firstly, think of what you want. Then, get emotionally involved with what you want. This impresses it on our subconscious mind, which changes our vibration, behaviour and actions. This changes the reaction from the universe and alters our results. Choose to focus only on what you want. Do not let your others or your paradigm sway your thinking. You are in control of what you think about. As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, we become what we think about all day long. How to use the stick person image. We must notice as often as possible how we are feeling or what's going on around us. This will then tell us what we're thinking. Pull up the image of the stick person as often as possible and use it as a trigger to remind you that what you think creates your emotions, vibrations and results. Our physical body is a massive energy in a constant state of high vibration. It's an instrument of our mind, so our mind controls our vibration. The conscious, educated, thinking mind has the ability to accept, reject, ignore or originate ideas. The subconscious, emotional mind can only accept everything it's given. Our conscious mind is hooked up to our outside world through our senses. We can see, hear, smell, taste and touch. All these inputs contain both positive and negative connotations, as dictated by the law of polarity. It's our thinking that dictates whether they are positive or negative and how they then affect us. You have a choice. We choose whether anything is positive or negative. We can choose to see the good in any situation or focus on the bad. No one can make us think anything we don't want to think. We control our thoughts, so our thoughts are the last human freedom. Our thinking ultimately dictates our attitude. As William James said, the greatest discovery of my time was that human beings could alter their lives by altering their attitude of mind. Get emotionally involved with what you think. Think you can lose weight? Imagine yourself in the body shape you want. Feel the pride and happiness. Chocolate cake and biscuits come up? Use that image to say no thank you. Think you can earn your salary in a month? Build an image of your future self earning that money and let yourself feel the accomplishment and enjoyment every day. Act like that person. This emotional involvement will change your vibration. Remember, what you think sets up the vibration. The vibration causes the action. Action causes the reaction from the universe. Your results, conditions and circumstances change. The stick person concept is key to understanding how our mind works and what controls 95% of our behaviour. And you will find a link to the stick person blog post and video within the description of this podcast. Now let's look at the 12th of the 13 principles of success. Principles of success number 12, the brain. Napoleon Hill in his book, Think and Grow Rich, states that every human brain is both a broadcasting and receiving station for the vibration of thought. The brain is also your electronic switching station. 
It receives signals from your mind and sends them to the body. And it can also receive signals from other brains through the creative imagination discussed in previous principles. Thought energy. When stimulated, the mind becomes more receptive to the vibration of thoughts from outside sources. This stepping up process takes place through the emotions, both positive and negative. Thought is energy travelling at an exceedingly high rate of vibration. Vibrations of an exceedingly high rate are the only ones picked up and carried from one brain to another through the broadcasting machinery of the human brain. It is for this reason that the emotion of sex is the most highly stimulating to the brain. Sex transmutation is the highest form of vibration because of the importance of reproduction to our species. It is a natural urge, in the same way as the need for food, water and shelter. Not only does a brain vibrating at such a high rate send out and receive broadcasts from other brains in the universe, but it is also these higher vibrations that give feeling to your thoughts. It is these feelings, this getting emotionally involved, that allows the thought or idea to be picked up and acted upon by the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind, as discussed above, is in control of 95% of your habitual behaviour. It's also the sending station of the brain, to the body, to create physical feelings and also to other brains. Autosuggestion, the third principle of success, also comes into play through the brain and the subconscious mind. It's the medium by which you put your broadcasting station into operation. Autosuggestion is one method by which desire may be transmuted to the subconscious in order to create the physical creation of your desire. The subconscious mind, creative imagination and autosuggestion are the only three principles you need to apply in order to use your broadcasting station, your brain. The stimuli through which these principles are put into action were discussed in the 10th principle and the starting point for any of those 10 stimuli is desire. The first principle of success. The dramatic story of the brain. Humans understand little of the intangible forces of our world. All of us are controlled by intangible forces which we cannot see. These include gravity, thunderstorms, electricity and others. All of which science knows about and can explain, but few of which we actually fully understand. Thought and our physical brains also fall into the realms of intangible. Scientists at the time Think and Grow Rich was written had discerned that the central switchboard of the brain has over 1 to the power of 15 million connections within it. Science has come on massively since then and there's a lot deeper understanding of the intangible things mentioned, including the brain, but there are still many unknowns. Regardless, it's still quite inconceivable that such a network of intricate machinery is in existence for the sole purpose of carrying on the physical functions incidental to growth and maintenance of the physical body. The connections are orderly, even when damaged, the brain connections can rewire to allow the body to still function closely to how it did previously to any damage. Telepathy and Clairvoyance At the end of Hill's chapter on the brain, he notes research at the time into telepathy and clairvoyance. He went on to discuss how he and two members of his staff were able to blend their minds into one in order to find solutions to a great variety of problems. He describes the procedure as very simple and similar to masterminding. They would simply sit down at a conference table and clearly state the nature of the problem to be solved. Then they would discuss it, each contributing whatever thoughts occurred until a plausible solution appeared. Now let's take a look at the last of the 13 principles of success. Principles of success 13. The sixth sense. According to Napoleon Hill in the 14th chapter of his book Think and Grow Rich, the sixth sense can also be called intuition, creative imagination, or the receiving set. It defies description and cannot be fully explained until a person understands the previous 13 chapters of the book. Twelve of these I have covered over the past three posts. The sixth sense is that portion of the subconscious mind which receives ideas, plans, flashes of inspiration, or hunches. It's probably the medium of contact between the finite mind of man and the infinite intelligence. This makes it a mixture of both the mental and the spiritual. This principle is the apex of the philosophy. It can only be assimilated, understood and applied by first mastering the other 12 principles. What the sixth sense can provide. Napoleon Hill said in Think and Grow Rich, Through the aid of the sixth sense, you will be warned of impending dangers in time to avoid them and notified of opportunities in time to embrace them. There comes to your aid and to do your bidding with the development of the sixth sense, a guardian angel who will open to you at all times the door to the temple of wisdom. Ever had deja vu? Or a hunch? Random spark of inspiration? Or the sudden urge to get out of a situation or go a different way? 
That's your guardian angel, your sixth sense. I can give one example from my life. I was going on a ride out with a group of friends on our motorbikes. We split into two groups and last minute I changed group because something felt off. The group I was meant to go with were involved in an accident, which I avoided. If I had not listened to my intuition, I could have been seriously injured or worse. Needless to say, I now always listen to my instincts and intuition. The organ of the sixth sense. Somewhere in the cell structure of the brain is an organ that receives the vibrations of thoughts, our hunches, but it had not been found at the time of Hill writing the book. However, it is known that humans do receive accurate knowledge from sources outside the physical senses. This knowledge is generally received when the mind is overly stimulated. Any emergency which arouses the emotions and causes the heart to beat faster than normal generally brings the sixth sense into action. When people face emergencies, including some so grave that there's a danger to life, they are miraculously guided by their guardian angel. They will receive guidance on what to do, and if they follow it, they will be more able to reach the best outcome. It's when people are not open to these suggestions or do not follow them that disaster and potentially death can follow. I can attest to this guidance twice in my life. Once involved my bike on a motorway, and the other while hill walking with a group of army cadets. Both times, my thinking mind shut down completely, and my guardian angel took control of my physical actions. Both times, I, and others involved, were kept as safe as possible. I don't remember a thing of what happened between the initial trigger and once things were safe again, but I am grateful to whatever it was that dictated my movements. How do I tune in to my sixth sense or intuition? The sixth sense is not something you can take off and put on. The ability to consciously tune into it comes from putting out all of the other principles of success into action. Hill also said that it's rare for anyone to come into the working knowledge of the sixth sense before the age of 40. To be able to learn how to tune into it requires practice, sitting in quiet places and letting your mind be calm and open to new ideas. You can also access it during mastermind meetings. Either way, it's only available to you when your mind is open and your paradigm quiet. Meditation, self-examination and serious thought are the ways think and grow rich suggest to speed up the process, and the following can also help. Meditate or practice mindfulness, taking time to quiet your mind and focus on the present moment, getting in touch with your emotions, paying attention to how you feel about different situations and decisions, trusting your gut feelings, your intuition is often a quick, instinctual response to a situation. If you get a strong feeling about something, try to trust it and act on it. Pay attention to your dreams. Your subconscious mind can often provide insights and guidance through your dreams. Spend time in nature. Being in a natural environment can help you feel more connected to your intuition and world around you. Remember that connecting with your intuition is a personal and subjective process. It takes time and practice, so be patient and persistent in your, in your efforts. What do you think? If this article resonates with you and you want to discuss it further, then get in touch today, either here or through any of my social medias, or schedule a call to discuss it with me directly. I do look forward to speaking with you. And if you want more information on all of these principles of success and more, check out the workshop that I ran a couple of years ago. The link will be in the description and also on the blog page. To your success, Jay. Oh, and have you heard about the upcoming Science of Getting Rich Summit? It might be worth you having a look, and it starts this week, the 19th of June until the 21st. All the details are in the comments. Have a great day.